Hello, Land Mobiles here in Walton on Thames at the Thames Water, Walton Advanced Water Treatment Works. On my left hand side, I have Richard Hulley from Thames Water, who is the uh, Operations Liaison Engineer. And on my left hand side, I have Richard Blackwell from Chatterbox. And we're here today to talk about the radio communication systems and uh, line worker requirements here at the site. Richard, if I can turn to you first, can you just tell us more about what this site does, its operations, etc., please? Sure, Thames Waters Walton Advanced Water Treatment Works is one of uh, Thames Waters large process plants. It treats between 80 and 100 million litres a day uh, and that goes out to directly fed customers or into the ring main and covers the Thames Water catchment area. You've got a lot of requirements to meet both in terms of environmental and health and safety. Can you just talk us through the kind of safety requirements for your workers here and how radio communication supports that? Yeah, well, uh, Thames take health and safety as their priority. Um, one of the key things here is the site is manned 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We have people working on their own or we have people on standby out of hours that have to come and work by the nature of the environment in a place where they can't readily be seen. So one of the key things we, we do as a company is we make sure that our employees are well looked after and that their safety is, is paramount. Due to the nature of the environment and the age of the buildings we have, um, the infrastructure around, we have lots of high voltage, we have lots of tanks of water. As a result, we have numerous areas where mobile phones don't work, communications are very difficult. So it was in, imperative that we had it, those areas covered, as well as the high risk areas where a traditional radio system would set off our water quality monitoring uh, or set off other alarms and you can't use those in those areas. Okay. And without revealing too much about the exact operations, I mean, what kind of duties would a lone worker have to perform that they would need a system there to, uh, to protect them from? Well, the, the lone worker can do everything from routine duties which would be come over, come over every four hours and bench test lab equipment to prove that water quality sampling is going on and that it's accurate. It could be as diverse as clean screens from leaves that are blown onto it and are blocking the inlet screens. It can be come out perform electrical work, perform mechanical work, anything really required either operational or maintenance to keep the site running. The, the nice part of the new system is that it goes away from having a handheld pager, a lone man working system, a mobile phone and a radio and we've now got one very small handheld device that the guys carry with them and does everything. Now the system you've installed is a beacon based system, it's based on Hytera handsets and it's a safety net location system. Can you just explain more about how that actual system works? Yeah of course, um, we have, uh, the system uh, can track a radio via GPS or by a beacon for, in, for internal tracking. Um, we have a number of beacons, some 95 beacons around the site located on doorways, stairwells, that sort of, that sort of thing. And then when they go outside, they've got the GPS and the, as the radio, uh, the radio then will send back the information of, uh, to the control room and then displayed on, the, on, a, on a PC. Well, we've mentioned the control room there. We're actually here at the pump house here. The control room's by the back near the main site there. What kind of information would be relayed back to the control room and how would that be interpreted if there was an incident, say uh, one of your workers fell over and set off an alarm? How would that be acted upon? What kind of actions would be uh, Well, the, uh, the alarm could be raised either by the operative pushing a panic button or the radio going motionless for a given set time or the, the radio having an impact or one of the various ways that we can actually activate by the radio. Um, that radio signal is then brought up into the control room. On the main control panel in the control room, it gives location and the date and time, which are all date and time stamped, which is useful for auditing purposes. Any radio comms through the system are automatically logged and recorded. So if we are having an event, and it doesn't necessarily need to be a health and safety event, it could be something, we have a burst pipe, we have a pump that's stopped, it could be a power dip on the site, it could be anything. Rather than having to log all of this, we can talk into the radios and then play it back later and actually capture what we were doing at the time. Um, that radio signal, once it gets to the control room, if the control room is manned and it's someone else on site, we can then identify where that person is, take the appropriate action and send people to assist. If it's 
genuinely out of hours and it's the controller for example who's had the problem while routine work is going on um, that signal is then echoed out to the people on standby and comes up on their mobile devices as a, an issue they can contact the controller directly if they're unable to get through to the controller uh, and it could be a false alarm but if they're unable to get through to the controller and they treat it as a real alarm they will attend site and from the control room they can identify exactly where he is so we haven't got to worry about searching 15 acres trying to find the person we can go exactly to them and help them. I suppose as demand for water increases from consumers and businesses as well the demand for uh, safety within these uh, facilities and from a communications point of view will always remain paramount and I think this is a great example of how those uh, systems can meet the business demands, operation demands and consumer demands as well going forward so it just leads me to say thank you very much indeed for your time today guys thank you. Mm -hmm.